I uh, want to quickly show you how to upload the US thesis template. Um, I see there is a University of Stellenbosch template on Overleaf, but that is for another faculty. So for engineering, um, all you do is you can Google uh, Stellenbosch University LaTeX template, and this is one of the hits that you'll find, the CTAN um, repository. So uh, this one is used to be maintained by uh, Donny Elson, I think he still does, but you just go down here to download. You have to uh, save this. And um, it'll give, it might give you a warning saying it's not secure, but don't worry, just accept that. So when you download it, let's just quickly go there. Um, here you can see it's downloading, and I'm saying please keep it. So as I said, you get a warning that it's not secure. So in this folder here is quite a bit of stuff. Important, you have to uh, extract it, otherwise you can't drag and drop it into Overleaf. So if you extract that zip file and you go into the zip file, uh, you will see there's a lot of documentation. So this readme file you can open with Notepad. There's um, some tech uh, templates and style documents in there. And then um, here's some, some source files here also if somebody else wants to change any of the, of the configuration stuff. Then if you go into doc, you'll see there's a few sample documents that have been generated. And if you go down into templates, then this zip file here, you can upload to Overleaf. So if you go into Overleaf, add project, and you just say upload, then as I said, you need to unzip this, this file, the, um, the Stellenbosch.zip file first. This master sample.zip, you can just drag and drop here. And Overleaf will automatically then pull this in, extract all the files, and then you're set with a template for, um, for engineering. So I just want to show you a few things on this. The first thing that is uh, fairly important is the, the, you can see this is the crest and all that on. So there's some information that you may want to go and change, and I'll show you where to change it, like supervisor, the date, etc. And um, obviously the title. Uh, and then... Uh, what is also important is at the end here is the list of references. So the first thing, let's just um, go and look at the department and title. So obviously here you can change the Afrikaans title and everything and um, address. Sorry, Afrikaans address. Here you can change the English address and faculty if you want. You can change uh, faculty here. You can see this. This just says there's an Afrikaans expression and an English expression. So you can change both. Um, then here you change the supervisor and uh, the co-supervisor. Uh, you change the date. So all the stuff that you have that's shown on the front page, you can edit right here. Um, the other thing that I think is important to, uh, to show you to do is just to change the, the referencing style. So if you look in that folder, I just want to jump back there real quick. In this folder, there's a document called usbub1.pdf. If you open that, it'll give you a description of all the configuration properties that you can set in this in this LaTeX document. So if I can just quickly drag my uh, PDF over here. This is an example, so you can see the different BibTeX options is if you use A, it's like a Harvard style. N is a numerical style. So in this file somewhere, you will also see there's a US Meg A. That's the bibliography style. So if you just change that to N and recompile, it's giving you a number here. Sometimes you have to compile it twice to get it right. Um, let's just see if it works. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, you can modify uh, all the things here. And if we go all the way down, um, you'll see there's some use packages that are in incorporated, color packages, all type of stuff. But all the way down, you will see there is a begin document, the one that we're familiar with, so in line 104. So that's where we want to start editing. Now, the first thing to note is this here just does the front page. So that basically is it. Then there's a declaration page, and I'll uh, go and show you how to change the declaration page in a second. I just want to look at something here real quick. There we go. So I've expanded all the files here, so you can see all the files that are included. Then we have an uh, instruction that says include front matter, chap front. So all that does is it goes into front matter and includes chap front. So if I click on chap front, you'll see this contains the abstract 
and then it includes the Afrikaans 8 Draxel. The Afrikaans 8 Draxel is on the same in the same tech file. All right, so that pulls in from an external tech file. So you can type the whole abstract in that um, chap front and then just include it into here. Then we include a table of contents like that. Then clear page just says move on to the next page. Um, and yeah, don't worry about that for the moment. Then a list of figures. And then we have a list of tables, another clear page. And then we have include nomenclature. Now, if you go down here, this will be um, the nomenclature will be somewhere here. Let's just go and find it real quick. Uh, we can click here to jump to the right. There we go. That's the nomenclature. So before the nomenclature, we have the list of tables. We have the list of figures, which is automatically generated. And obviously also the contents, which is um, automatically generated so then we pulled in the nomenclature and just to show you the nomenclature file so in here you basically just begin with the nomenclature and you enter all the units and their names let's just go and look what that results in so this results in x which is a coordinate um, as you can see it's got an item x um, okay uh, then if you go down a bit more you will see down here they then include there's an instruction here to start with main matter and then it includes um, the content chapter one so if you see under the folder contents you will find chap one and in chapter one you can see we have a label for that chapter so if you want to refer back to that chapter we can just use the ref instruction and the chapter has a name and if we just jump there real quick you'll see that is what appears. So in here we have the section, introduction, etc. just typed in the normal way. And um, we also have, maybe important to mention at this point, we have site P and site T. Site P means site paragraph and site T is site text. So in the middle of the text, if you want to say Kundal et al, um, you would say site T. If you want the citation at the end of the paragraph with a parenthesis, or the, the round brackets, um, then you would use site P. So that's a, a bit of a distinction that you have under some of the, the style guides. And then finally, obviously, um, we have our uh, appendix, which is just results in the appendix. So as you can see, all that this does is to pull in from various files that have just been saved in strange folders like the contents folder the front matter folder and you can see they have the uh, the figs folder as well and then also a back matter which will be where your bibliography sits that you already know um, that's that's all it does and then at the end of the the document it just says pull in the bibliography and there we go um, so this is the thesis that i recommend you use and i'll make a separate video for the uh, description of our Scripsy report.